Makers and Dimensionals, this is Internet Personality Vangelis, and I really have been meaning to review Make Toys Cross Dimension pieces for a while, and in order. However, I got a review sample of Thunder Erebus, the third and latest design released in the series, so I'm gonna start with him, cause he's new. For context, and pretending like I've reviewed the Striker and the Rioter, Cross Dimension is all about a stylized art style that doesn't try to fill in collection gaps so much as represent a designer's own take on classic ideas, with the added bonus of heavy articulation and copious ab joints. And Thunder Erebus is the evil black redeco of Striker Erebus, who actually hasn't come out yet, they released the Nemesis one first. But clearly this is inspired by the old Power Master Optimus Super Jinrai Prime concept. Thunder Erebus is a semi-truck pulling a big futuristic space trailer. A small semi-truck pulling a big, long, massive by comparison futuristic space trailer. The proportions are kind of weird here, but they do make the trailer look like it's some kind of friggin' super weapon. All the wheels roll and you can turn Erebus at his trailer hitch for semi-realistic steering action. Putting this guy next to Striker Manish shows that this figure is clearly not meant to be that figure pulling a trailer. I don't know any of the cross-dimension fiction for this guy, so I have no idea what precisely he represents in that universe, but bear in mind that his vehicle mode size is based almost entirely on having a Generations leader-sized combined robot mode. There's also a partner Power Master figure who sadly has no driver's seat to occupy or like, a name that I'm aware of. He's also tiny, clocking in a height that's a slice shorter than a Titan Master. His details are pretty crisp, but his articulation only punches a little bit out of his size class, with swivel-hinged shoulders, ball socket hips, and knee hinges. Definitely respectable for the size, but also leaving me wishing the teensy little head could turn left and right. The Erebus cab on its own is a very boxy G1-ish Optimus shape, still carrying its cross-dimension aesthetic, but also coming off a bit more solid in silhouette than the Strikers. Like the Power Master, this too is pretty tiny, with a Legend-scaled length despite having at least 50% more mass than most of the things you'd actually call Legend-scaled. The front grille is a spring-loaded panel that kinda locks into a depressed position, since the partner figure can fold up into a surprisingly tablock-laden engine mode to fill in that divot. It's a neat idea to try and have the Power Master socket recede and refill semi-automatically, but in practice, the mechanism feels a hair short of rock solid. Despite its size, the Erebus cab can transform into a standalone robot mode, and it has just enough steps to be impressive for such a small thing, while riding just along the fine line of finicky hand feel. This is certainly more of a Jinrai than an Optimus Prime, as the front of the cab mode ends up on his back, while the pectoral windows and grille are completely different from their vehicular counterparts. My main qualm here is that the head slider feels like it's supposed to have some rear-end support under the back of the neck plate, and doesn't. Obviously the color scheme isn't the most dynamic thing in the world, but this little Erebus is a solid-looking pocket-sized palmful of Nemesis Jinrai. Well, I say the colors aren't dynamic, but I lie. Those blazing crimson pectoral windows are a delight. Anyway, large backpack plank aside, the proportions of this robot mode are anime lovely, marred only by the, well, backpack and somewhat overbearing hip wheels. The head sculpt is absolutely beautiful, doubly so at this scale. In fact, the scale is almost a shame as it hits the lines and curves of a cartoon prime head so well, I'd have liked to see it on something closer to 6 or 7 inches in height. The steely cold optic paint apps are a swell blueberry on top. You can draw a small pair of guns from the bigger pair of guns on the trailer, giving this little Prime some punchy akimbo firepower. His fists have rectangular slots, so unfortunately, you can't start passing him tons of other accessories from DX9 or Iron Factory's similarly scaled robot offerings. Oh, also, you don't need to have the engine guy installed if you don't want to, and I kinda like the look of these two as an anti-heroic duo. Tiny Erebus's head is on a ball socket joint, which allows for a little bit of tilt on a toy this small that makes me really happy. Uh, the bummer is this little platform, his head just tends to sink backwards and look very silly. Uh, it's unfortunate because the, the ball socket joint is great for the size, that platform gets in the way of a lot. Uh, the shoulders can go forwards and backwards, there's a separate uh, hinge to go outwards, and then there is a bicep swivel, there is a decently crunching single elbow joint, there is a wrist swivel with a platform attached to the bottom of the fist, but it hugs so tightly to the forearm and doesn't bump anything. Like, I'm okay with this for a wrist swivel. 
You also got a waist joint that doesn't work super well unless you take this backpack and just get it up out of the way. Now the waist joint totally works. Problem is now you've also got all this mush up here. Uh, the backpack can also like tilt and stuff. Um, I feel like something is just missing in this whole midsection area. Also, I know he's small, but man, it would have been cool if there was an ab joint, because that also would have gotten the backpack out of the way for the waist joint to work. Uh, these hip wheels can swing down like this. Doesn't look helpful at first, but then when you kick them out sideways, they have enough space to allow for some uh, perceptor kick factor. The hip skirts are fused to the hips, so when you kick forward, there's no impediment, and it looks real smooth and slick, and he can kick super high. There's the thigh swivel and a knee joint with a deep enough bend at this size, especially to make me happy. The uh, feet can toe tap a little bit, although the, the heel comes up with them. And then from the transformation, you've got a sort of an ankle tilt. It's a diagonal cut swivel, but it does help you do them kind of ankle tilted poses. So this guy, for a little dude, is very decently articulated. The only major bummers are the neck platform and just the the way that something seems to be missing in this whole setup to allow for the waist joint to work. Because, like, that waist joint you don't use for anything else. After attaching the engine, if you haven't already, you've basically got to transform Erebus back into a truck, except for his legs, before preparing his trailer for their sinister super mode. And you can start doing that by removing all the weapons. The transformation takes your usual Super Jinrai Power Master Prime deal and adds a whole lot more panel interfolding. And I do mean inter and folding. That said, the arms mostly just do the predictable thing, albeit with more clever geometry than the original G1 idea. After that, though, you do really need to do things in a certain order. On the bright side, Thunder Erebus makes use of very smart tabs and slots to clearly communicate what's going on if you get lost. The trickiest part is once you get into the legs, and that's because the feet are full of engineering and you don't actually need to use all of it right now. There's probably God Bomber type stuff in there, and Thunder Erebus is a trio, not a quartet. This bit also highlights my favorite part about the wheel segments, and how they have subtle and solid locking points in both modes that make them feel way less jiggly than one might expect once you've got them into place in either configuration. Now, take the two-thirds truck mode Erebus, fold up his secret backward second knee joint to tab his heels into the back of his cab, and slot him diagonally down into the awaiting cavity. If everything's compressed properly, the Thunderhead platform will close down happily on top. Also, add the double barrel cannons to the shoulders. You know you want to. It just doesn't look right if you don't. Take Super Jinrai Power Master Prime, run him through the cross-dimension style of anime mecha filter, and then give him an ebony nemesis paint job. Thunder Erebus is the result of that equation, and he strokes a lot of my aesthetic biases, and I don't really mind. It's cool to see a smooth and dynamic skeleton beneath such a bulky design, and coating it in surface detail sculpting certainly helps as well. The proportions are very skewed towards the legs, but not overblown so as to become disagreeable to me. There is a butt flap, but I think he wears it well. There are some outer leg flaps, but I think... Well, I wish those hugged in a lot tighter. Also, all those wheels around the feet feel very cluttered, to say the least, regardless of their stability. Thunder Erebus has a striking head sculpt, full of Super Jinrai and nailing the particular curvatures of a Power Master Prime faceplate. It's also strongly complemented by the blazing red pectoral window panes just below. The whole color scheme sits on this design fabulously, in my opinion. The two big rifles can be stored on either side of the back plate. Not entirely sure how intended this is, as I sometimes have trouble getting the tabs and slots to play nice, but when it works, it feels right, and there's a picture of it on the back of the box, so I guess it's intended. The handles have got T channels to slot down into Thunder Erebus's waiting palms if you actually want him to, I don't know, hold his guns and shoot them at things and people, predictably. Thunder Erebus has got a ball socket head, which has wonderful free motion, wonderful waggle, nod and lull. It's a great head. The arms are able to go forwards and backwards. A separate hinge lets them go outwards. And then if you move them forwards and backwards while they're outwards, the different axes does make things look kind of weird, but not super weird. Bicep swivel works. You have a single elbow joint. There's another elbow joint here that is ratcheted and for the transformation you can use that for a double hinge and full curl. I just find I get everything I need out of this one for the most part. I don't usually need to get these extra couple degrees, but they are there if you want them. The wrists can swivel happily 
the fingers open on a knuckle hinge, and then if you really want to, you can leave the pointer finger out. It is just curved enough to probably work for a lot of people as a pointing finger, but just curved enough to bum me out. What doesn't bum me out, though, is what this guy's torso does, because this is glorious, especially for the thickness and chunk of this guy's whole body shape. Big clickety side-to-side -side waist motion, and then... Mmm, yeah, I mean, just do this whole... Do this all day. This makes me real. <laughs> his side skirts can go outwards like this. His forward skirts can go up like this, so as you can do all of your hip games. Lots of click for the kick. The butt skirt can fold backwards enough to get his leg far, uh, far back enough for a walking pose. There is some softer, more buttery outwards click for enough of a close enough. 99% Van Damme to make me feel warm and squishy. There's a thigh swivel that works. Clickety knee joint that curls this tight, but it's in just the right place to look good when the thigh is that big and the shin is that big. I like that knee a lot. Stuff's happening. Details revealing. The ankles. The ankles do this noise too. It's so good. The only bummer about the ankles is the, the aforementioned thing I talked about with this not hugging super tight is it hugs even less tight when you use the ankle joint. The wheels sort of feel like they're trying to fill in, but it's not really. It's fine. It's just like if I was going to have any kind of aesthetic down marks, this is one of the petty ones I'd pull out. Uh, the foot can also rock forwards and backwards, whereas this extra heel piece here kind of moves autonomously along with some of the wheel segments because this is all going to be like a god Jinrai foot uh, if you get some armor for this guy that doesn't exist as of this recording. And, uh, oh, yeah, also right up here on his, on his stomach, check it. You can, uh, you can wiggle his belly bumper, and you can make his <laughs> engine aroused. Anyway, uh, oh, uh, there, there is no toe, toe joint, so I guess if you're gonna throw another demerit down, this guy can't toe. But he can do, like, literally, uh, every pose I've wanted him to do, given his girth. And then he not literally could not do every pose I could think of because I did everyone I wanted to and I started to try to get crazy and then I ran into a few little things like he can't tow and uh, uh, these things are st this guy's posability is great don't let people tell you otherwise because much like what one might expect from make toys cross dimension it is a joy to articulate his body and place him into postures that bring you pure happiness Coming in at the kind of size that makes him oddly sibling-like when placed next to the recent leader-sized Power Master Prime from Titan's Return, Thunder Erebus is absolutely not trying to win points with any folks who want to figure out SOME masterpiece place to put their higher-priced unofficial pieces, instead taking a neoclassic size and scale and wrapping it in very distinct design stylings. So everything I love about Make Toys Cross Dimension, but at a weird-looking size when you start comparing truck cabs. The solid hand feel of the tab-loaded transformation and ratchet-loaded torso and leg articulation is damn cool, but to be honest, it's the smaller cab robot that made this set for me. It's got a big backpack blocking the waist problem, but it's right on the level that had me messing around with it for almost a whole day without the trailer. I love me my pocket-scale high-end robots, that is to be sure. Bear in mind my biases. Of course, You've got to like how this guy looks first and foremost if you're trying to figure out whether or not you want to get one. Definitely, if you've enjoyed Striker Manus and Rioter Despotron, the Thunder is worth the pickup. Whether or not you do it in noir is up to you. The quality is up to my expectations, and the tiny cab robot put a smile on my face. The trailer transformation is a whole lot of variations on the same trick for the most part, so if engaging conversion is your primary desire, it may strike you as lacking. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I totally will get back to those other two cross-dimension guys, mark my words. The weird thing is going to be once I've made those reviews sometime in the indeterminate future and you're watching them in what you think is the order, and then you get to this one, and I'm talking about how I haven't done those other two yet, if that's the case, then I guess you'd better leave me a comment to tell me that you are a time traveler.